Build in Public is a movement in technology practiced by everybody from Elon Musk to startup founders in the poorest areas. No matter who it is, who's doing the building, people like watching a success story. And Build in Public shows everything in that story. It's informative. It's inspiring. It motivates. It motivates other people. It motivates myself. And when I was living in Rome in October, I became obsessed with Build in Public. So welcome, everybody. This is episode four of The Edward Show. And uh, if you search Build in Public on TikTok, I show number one. I show number one. I thought that would be so cool. And uh, turns out, big mistake. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why it was a mistake. I'll talk about how I did it why it's a mistake and what caused me to do it in the first place. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I, I became obsessed with the idea of building public while I was living in Rome. I mean, this channel is called Edward builds on YouTube. It's build in public. I have the Twitter, I have a YouTube handle at build in public on TikTok. My handle is at build in public on Instagram. It's Edward builds on Facebook. It's Edward builds. I think on LinkedIn and Pinterest, it's also Edward Build. So I, I thought that it, w- it was just so cool to be build in public. And um, I saw these great people doing it. I really love Peter Levels. I think he popularized the movement, the build in public movement. But Elon Musk as well. Everything that he's doing with his startups, he's showing himself crushing it with his startups. And he's do- he is probably the biggest build in public person in the world. Uh, people like seeing what people who have the odds stacked against them succeeding. And I think if you're a startup founder, the odds are stacked against you. People want to see you succeed so they can be inspired, but also learn what you learn. So, so they can do it too. And even if you fail, it's okay. As long as you explain why you fail and do it in such a way that it still like motivates people to keep trying. So yeah, building public is excellent. So I, I tried to do it actually, when I was living in Rome, I tried to do it on Twitter. I think building public started on Twitter and I tried to do it on Twitter and, uh, I tried it for a few weeks and it turns out to get popular as a big building public account on Twitter, actually very difficult. And, uh, you know, at this time, this was before the acquisition, there was no follower ads, follower ads would have helped a lot. Now there are follower ads, which I I very highly recommend trying. I think they're One of the biggest marketing hacks that there is today. They're so cheap. They get you a lot of followers, a lot of impressions. I've I've tested if these followers are real. I DM them. They DM me back. So these are real people. Follower ads are incredible. But at the time, there were not. So what I'm about to tell you is, is like, if you want to do build in public, just totally organic on Twitter, this is what it takes. It takes two to four hours a day of tweeting. That's coming up with your own tweets, coming up with your own threads, replying to people, uh, over 500 tweets a month. I was doing research into the top build in public people. They were doing over 500 tweets a month. And the really, the really hard thing is the benefits don't unlock until after you've done it for a while. It's a, it's very much a rich, get richer type of thing. The more followers you have, the, the more community you have, the better your tweets do. And if you don't have a lot, it's, it's quite hard to be discovered. And, uh, so I tried this for a few weeks and it was just very difficult. I got, I just, I didn't like that. I was spending so much time doing build in public and not enough time actually building. And, uh, so then I started thinking like, maybe there was somewhere where build in public wasn't totally saturated because I felt like after doing that for a few weeks on Twitter, in, in October in Rome, I felt like it was just too saturated on Twitter. And so I, I thought about other places, a lot of places, a lot of people had been telling me to get on TikTok. And so I looked into TikTok and I, I just did some very simple research. I just searched build in public or indie hackers on TikTok and it wasn't saturated at all. And so I was, I thought maybe even though it's not saturated, it's undersaturated. Maybe there will still be a market for this on TikTok. 
So I created my account to build in public on TikTok. If you search build in public on TikTok, you'll find me. This was on November 1st. I had just arrived from Rome to Barcelona. I had ditched the old, I, I was at, at, at the time I had been experimenting with TikTok and I ditched the old account that I was using to experiment with. And then I got to Barcelona and started this new account build in public. And, um, I got pretty big on it. So suffice it to say, I, I, I recorded a podcast yesterday about how I got big on it, my story with TikTok. So if you'd like to hear how I got, I have like 35,000 followers. I made the most viewed video in the world on the, the Silicon Valley bank collapse. I've had so many videos. I've gotten millions of views. And, um, I make videos every day now. It's, it's my, it's, I think one of the best marketing hacks in the world, TikTok, because you can also make it so your videos come out everywhere else without the TikTok watermark. It's incredible. And, um, but, but this, this podcast isn't about how I did that. You can listen to the one yesterday, episode number three. And, uh, this one is why actually ranking number one on for building public was not a good idea. So. I'm, I am, uh, probably one of the best search engine optimizers in the world. I've done it from Microsoft timing, Procter and Gamble, ADP, SMBs. I write a lot about search engine optimization. It used to be my favorite marketing channel. Now I think maybe, maybe TikTok is, but it's, it's an incredible marketing channel, search engine optimization. And so I kind of just did basic SEO skills to rank number one, which is like use the keyword for build in public and put it in your name and put it in your description. I don't even need it in the description anymore because I'm big enough. Use a hashtag a lot using your videos. So I use the build in public hashtag. My name is build in public. That was enough to make me ranking number one. I also, I don't come up number one in YouTube for building public, but I think I'm pretty high as well. And, um, <clears throat> I, I, did this. So the reason I even wanted to do this is so funny. I basically had this big chip on my shoulder from not being able to become one of the big build in public people on Twitter. And I tried it for weeks and I was adding, I was like messaging people. I was trying to get noticed. People weren't appreciating me and, and people weren't following me. And, and, and like people would would message back with me. They would see me tweeting about building public. They would be building public people themselves and then they wouldn't follow me back. And it felt so bad. And I developed this, this big chip on my shoulder. So I wanted to get big on, on TikTok as an F you. I wanted to rank number one on TikTok for building public as an F you to all those people on Twitter who, who weren't taking me seriously. And that was stupid. I mean, I think when, whenever you do something out of like, it wasn't, I, you know, it, it wasn't like malicious intent, but it was like, I want to be noticed. And, um, it was, it was, it was a bit immature, even though it worked and it, it actually like, uh, it would have been way more effective if I had come up with a, I think a sexier brand. Um, and, uh. I also want to talk about, I'll, I'll get into that deep, more deeper in, in a moment, but I also want to mention just, it was actually, it turned out being way easier to, um, do build in public on TikTok. I'm going to just quickly say why. So like, if you, if you try my route, try the method that I, that I did and I'll, t I, I tell you exactly how to make the videos in my podcast yesterday, but it takes 30 minutes a day, shoot, uh, shoot and edit everything in the TikTok app. If you did two hours a day, like you, like you have to do with Twitter, you'll basically have superpowers. And I did two hours a day. You can get immediate success. So quick story. In the early days of ChatGPT, one of my co-founders and I, we came out with the site, bestreasonswhy.com gives you reasons, gives you reasonable re reasons for doing literally anything in the world using GPT. And, um, we, we built in two days, released it in, in 75 minutes. I made three videos about it on TikTok. One of the videos got 67,000 views and off those 67,000 views, we got 3,100 daily active users to the site. That's crazy. That's more, if you rank number one on product hunt, I think you'll get like 1500 DAUs just or in a day. 
you just get 1500 users in a day. If you rank number one on product time. And this was only 67,000 views on TikTok. That's crazy. Took me 75 minutes, made those videos right when the app came out. Um, so I, I think it was actually more effective. That's a dream situation to happen on, on Twitter with building public. So it was super effective. Doesn't require a lot of work. Crazy marketing hack, especially if you compare it to the alternative. The downside is if, if you actually know, even if you're not an amazing speaker. I think I'm a pretty good speaker, but even if you're not a great speaker, you can just use the AI voices that TikTok gives you. It gives you generated voices. So you can do that. You don't even have to speak. You don't even have to show your face. TikTok's incredible. Really love TikTok. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, I, so I, I screwed up by doing the build in public brand because it's chip on my shoulder. Um, by doing it on TikTok and my YouTube handle, I, sh I should have done something about me, something something more memorable, something sexier. Um, and I wish I had, and I feel, feel like it's too late now. Maybe it's not, I might end up changing it, but I think like there, there's basically areas where you, you don't want to compromise brand for SEO. Um, so actually a pretty easy example is like a lot of websites, like putting a keyword in their domain name and for sure that helps them rank. But they end up working on the site for years and they realize they wish they, they didn't limit themselves with that keyword because they don't need it anymore because you get big enough and you're like, oh, I could have done this without, I mean, sure, like the keyword was a kickstart and it helped me at the beginning, but I could have done this without that traffic and I could have done SEO. I could have ranked number one for this keyword anyway by just having it as a page on my site rather than the domain. And I think it's the same concept. Um, with what I did, I, I could have, I could have showed up as a top voice for building public anyway, by just making popular videos about building public on, on TikTok and YouTube. And I didn't need to call myself building public. It made it. So I ranked faster, but I didn't need to do that. And, uh, that was a big lesson. And so, uh, I, I, yeah, I don't know how relevant it is for anybody listening, but I, I think there are a bunch of different lessons in it. And, um, at, like, if there is something that you want to rank for, if you, if you like me have like a chip on your shoulder for some phrase or term, like you can rank for, I, I'll, I'll tell you, you can rank for it pretty easily on TikTok. And it, yeah, it is. And, and, and maybe even on YouTube too. And it is cool to be able to tell people like, yeah, I rank number one for build in public. Cause it's such a widely known movement it, for, for entrepreneurs. I love the movement. I'm proud to be associated with it because it is an amazing movement. Um, I just wish I had gone about it in a different way. One that didn't make it so that like my brand name is built in public. So now I've changed my name, like my handle is built in public, but my name is, I think, Edward Sturm on both YouTube and on uh, TikTok. So, uh, yeah, but cool lesson. Nonetheless, would have done if, if I was doing it again, I would have done something more flavorful. Um, I eat, I, I eat garlic every morning. And, uh, I think that's actually like a health hack, eating gar garlic every morning, raw garlic. I have a clove. I chew it. It burns. Uh, apparently it's really good for me. It's really good for a lot of people. It doesn't make me smell bad. People think it does that. In fact, crazy theory. I think it's an aphrodisiac. Okay. But I would, I think I would have called my channels your daily gar or like the daily garlic or just daily garlic or something. If I was to do it again, I think that's a, that would be a fun handle. But yeah, I'm building public. You can search building public on TikTok if you'd like to see the content that I make. And uh, it's cool that I rank number one for it. And you know, maybe in a year or two, I'll be like, ah, I'm so glad I did that. I, I, that's my name. But um, it was a lesson. There are a bunch of lessons in the story. So, uh, but yeah, brand. I guess I'll leave you with this. I'll leave you with this. Um, anybody can get as big as, uh, you know, I'm not even that big, but anybody big can do what I've done with consistency. That's number one. And number two is don't underestimate the power of a strong brand. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.